So you've mentioned that you understood Jag nominating you as you were targeting him. But in your interview with Julie last night, you had said that you felt the double blind side of you in America was, quote, a bit much. So how do you feel about the move now from both a personal and strategic perspective? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really stand by what I said. Like, it was a bit much. If you're going to make the move against me, you have to do the double backdoor. There's no reason not to. On a personal level, there's no problem with that. I think, obviously, it it sucked being up there with America. But if you're going to make the move, that's what you're going to do. Because America would have been a vote for me. You had two vetoes. It's the more theatrical thing to do. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll retract that. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, from a strategic level, it was definitely the right move because i would have won hoh and put up matt and jag probably this week but definitely at the final seven um so you know they definitely made the right move um i think they made the right move based on less information than they had though because uh it was just basically america talking to blue which i really did have nothing to do with so that part of it is kind of interesting like they made the right move without all the information but again, sometimes you just have to go with your gut. Um, so I fully respect that move. It was the right move. Personally, it's fine. Um, it just obviously sucked to experience, but uh, it was always on the radar. Maybe not the double back door, but I always thought there's a good chance I could be named as a replacement now. You were initially hesitant to get into a showman's, but eventually you and America ended up getting together. And then you eventually became boyfriend and girlfriend. This week, you said that she actually meant more to you than the game. How much did your gameplay change once your feelings for her got incorporated into it? It actually didn't change that much. I think the way I like to think about my showman's of America is it was like a really strong final two that everyone knew about. Um, I could have done like a Kevin Jacobs, Big Brother Canada 10, like final two that no one knows about, or like Danielle and Jason or something. But that's not the reality. People even knew about like the me and Jared final two. So like, obviously me and America were very transparently out in front. We're at show events. Um, but I don't think it changed my strategy that much. Um, saying I care more about her than the game. The truth is if there was a world where I could stay over her this week, I would have gone for it. The only path I had, I think, was making America feel really guilty and then basically giving up, which that's a line I wasn't willing to cross. Um, you know, I think I want to do whatever it takes to win within reason, and that just feels kind of cruel, and I was I was never going to do that. So I think that might have been what I'm referring to. But, yeah, I mean, you know, she's, she's incredible, and I kind of was able to read the room about how the votes were going this week, and I tried my hardest to flip the votes towards my side, but I don't think there was a real path outside of me, again, going down that route I already talked about. You clearly had a lot of reverence for Suri as a Survivor legend, especially considering your brother's history with the show. Talk to me about the relationship you had throughout your time in the house and how you view her game now. Yeah, I mean, Suri's incredible, right? I think she's been having a tough time in the house recently because it's just not what she expected, especially after being on Survivor four times, Traitor, Snake in the Grass, like Big Brother sorry survivor people is the most intense of, of all these shows from what i hear from everybody just the duration of it the always on camera factor um so it's been really nice to talk to her about that because i think we've been experiencing similar struggles when it comes to that i will say like at the start of the season i was like wait Suri's not nearly as good as i expected because she was being super flip floppy and antsy and trying to flip these votes for no reason and seemed frenetic and all over the place but as the season went on, I started to realize, oh, shoot, I understand why she's such a good player. Uh, because you talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, no matter what, you walk away from that conversation thinking, well, I feel great about Suri. I can take her to the final four or final three or final two or something. So I can see why she's such a great player. But she's going to have the same problem Suri always has. How do you get from the final five, from the final four, from the final three to the final two? Because she's not going to win the competition. Someone's going to have to take her. And no one's going to take her because there's going to be someone easier to take. Um, so that's the that's the Surrey game. And I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope she can figure it out. But she's been incredible. It was so cool walking in because I was pulled into the nether region. But just walking in and then seeing her and just like trying to wrap my mind around, oh, my God, I'm playing with 
Surrey Fields from 12, 16, 20, and 34. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. When Izzy and Felicia were on the block, you chose to help flip the house to get Izzy out. In the process, you got into an argument with Jared where you outed all of his alliances. How do you look back on those moves to change your status quo, considering what happened in the six weeks that followed that day? So here's why I don't regret it. Uh, number one, it was fun. It was a great time flipping the vote. I was playing so hard, talking to everyone. and The fight was fun, maybe unnecessary, but I think Jared came at me pretty hot and I'm just, maybe I have an ego, maybe it's toxic masculinity. I don't know. I just felt like I had to defend myself, at least to make sure Matt and Jack didn't flip back to Jared. Um, the reason I can't regret it is, again, the, I was evicted six weeks after. Like, literally the next week, Jared won HOH, and I was able to make it through that with all the relationships I had formed. So, like, the game completely flipped, and I went from probably, like, a 7 out of 10 position to, like, a 7 out of 10 position. And then it didn't work out because of competition outcomes, twists, some of the, you know, smaller decisions I made. So, like, if I stuck it out with Jared, Izzy, and Suri... I might have had more security. I probably would have been able to lay low for a little bit longer. I think it just would have left me with a group of people that I didn't have as strong a relationship with compared to Jared and Izzy, right? Like Felicia is closer to Jared, Izzy, and Suri. Mimi's closer to Suri and Jared. Uh, Bowie would have been there, who at that point was probably closer to Suri. Like there's just so many players who would have been left and I would not have had relationships with them as opposed to like, jag and america and cameron who were like Suri and jared's and izzy's next target so i'm like wait these are people i can actually work with who have relationships with me before these people so i thought to give myself more agency so i can play more actively was a move i had to make and um i think it really could have worked out things things were different i think you know i can make it through this week make it through the double all of a sudden i'm in the final five like i don't regret that i regret how it played out but not the decisions i made to finish, give me your rapid fire thoughts on each of the remaining house guests, starting with America. Uh, incredible. Blue. Mm -hmm. Passionately frustrating. Bowie Jane. Australia. Suri. Super solid. Felicia. Turbulent. Jag. Cockadoodles. And finally, Matt. Really impressive.